Hey, this is Rocket Brain Surgeon. Today we're looking at 742 Team Battle Callings, and we're going to do it the easy way. So many people just overcomplicate the process. Oh my god, they'll say the 110 go here, the 5100 go there, the FCM go here, the IS-6 go there, I'm going to go here, like tractor go there, T1 go over this way. No, for the love of god, stop it. So we're not even running on TS on this map, and I say, everyone here, light tanks there, go. That is literally it. That's all the direction that you need. And there's a little bit more to that why that works, but the general plan of sending the T1s, the tier 1s to one side of the map and the main force to the other side of the map, and I'm going to scout for the enemy, that makes a lot of sense. So the plan is always the same. I'm in the scout. I'm going to find the enemy and then rejoin the main force. The tier 1s are going to be on the opposite side of the map, scouting for back caps and being able to push into the enemy's cap when they see a good opportunity. That's it. That's the plan. The main force is going to smash into their main force at some point. So I spot the enemy and it looks like they're just doing a hard camp around their base. I tell the team they're doing a hard camp, spread out somewhere around and I just ping the map wherever it doesn't really matter don't try to micromanage it again saying oh this tank needs to go here this tank needs to go there do this do that do this first of all they're not going to pay attention second of all it's just time consuming and aggravating to everyone involved so the basics of what's going to happen when we engage we're going to have four tanks engage from one direction I'm in an auto loader and I'm going to be flanking them, engaging from another direction, and our tier 1s are going to jump on cap when they see the opportunity. Now this team is not good because you can see that a couple of tanks have popped up on the E0 line, so not only did they not bring tier 1s, they just split up their force. And so you're going to get a lot of easy wins like this where the other team just doesn't know how to do the game mode in the first place and they just kind of wander around the map. But seriously, look how simple that was. Just the easiest plan in the world led to a two minute win. We're just going to cap them out instead of chase them down because who cares. I played 12 games with this group going 9 and 3. They are just pure randoms that I picked up I didn't even qualify them. I didn't care what tanks they drove. Nothing. I didn't say anything to them at all. I didn't check their stats. I didn't kick anyone. Uh, I didn't invite any friends. These guys are all new to me. We've never played together before. Yeah, so I'll show you the next a couple games. I have only 11 of the 12 games for some odd reason. We are on Ruinberg again. This team did bring Tier 1s. We're on the opposite side. And we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to send the Tier 1s into the field. We're going to send everybody else into the city. I'm going to scout the middle, find out where the enemy is going. And that's going to be that. Super, super easy. Uh, now, when I spot like an IS-3 or an IS-6, I know 100% of the time that the enemy is close by him. So if you only spot an IS-3, and IS-3 is never alone. That just pro tip right there. He's never alone. So all I need to do is spot one of those tanks. If you spot like the 1390, uh, sometimes even the Pershing could be doing a little bit of freelancing. You may not be quite so certain of where the battle is or where the other guys are going to be. But if you spot an IS-3, he's not alone all the time. If you spot a tier one, well, guess what? Their main force isn't around there either. So I get spotted, and it's something with a lot of camo. I try to peek out, and I realize it is the 1390, and there's the Pershing. So it's like, okay, they're doing a field push, and I spot everybody else too. I need to get out of there. I'm not loaded, and we have to rethink our strategy. So our main force is nowhere near the enemy, and it's silly to just run them at the enemy. I mean, why? Why would we do that? However, they are relatively close to the enemy cap, so I ping them to go to cap. We're just going to fast cap them out and let the enemy deal with it. The 1390, I'm not quite sure what he's thinking. I wonder if he thought that there was going to be some resistance around me or some teammates, so he kind of zoomed by. Uh, he could have kind of suicided both of us, more or less. Yeah, so I'm still running the simple plan. As long as the enemy's not at the cap, can we get to the cap? Yeah, we can get to the cap. Okay, well then let's go to the cap, and that's what I tell him to do. Uh, there's a 110 that's lagging behind. 
in F2. I'm not sure what he's thinking. And these are some of the problems that you're going to have when you do battle calling. There are people who just won't be looking at chat or pinging the map or uh, won't be paying attention or who will think, no, I just need to sit here and take one more shot. And so your, your group can get split up a little bit. And so that was my fault on not getting to him earlier. Now that we're on the cap, the enemy is realizing like, oh, wow, they got problems because they're not exactly in the best position to defend the cap. They can actually hide behind some outcroppings and put up a pretty uh, determined fight on the cap, and the enemy is just kind of stuck in the field. So the other 1390 and I work on this Pershing, and we are able to clip him out. The cap is going very well. There's a 1390 in front of me that I'm just going to put a couple shots in. And the other team is in a real problem because they have a 5100. Their IS-3s can't really peek effectively around the corner, and when they do, they're just peeking into a 110 and an IS-6. So it's really hard for them to defend this. We basically have two ways of winning. We have the way of just capping them out, and we have the way of also uh, having them peek into us and we killing our tanks. There's a tier one of theirs on our cap, and I'm going to go solve the problem. It's probably not the best idea. I should have actually clipped uh, into one of those IS-3s or the 5100. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure it looked like we were doing okay on cap. We already had our other 1390 getting flank shots, so I wanted to make sure that we weren't in danger of randomly losing. Uh, ram him to death, no problem. And now it looks extremely good for us. Uh, the 5100 is almost dead, so is the 1390, so when they barrel into the cap zone, they really got nothing. Another easy game on that simple plan. Next up, we're on Himmelsdorf. The other team has a couple of tank destroyers. Now, I have said that I really don't care about the tanks that I take, but there have to be they have to fill two roles. One, they have to have a turret, and two, they have to be not terribly slow. So things like the KV-4, KV-5, Super Pershing, those are just right out because you can't do any fast cap strategies. You can't defend your cap with that tank. It's just too slow to do anything, and... Team games are really about mobility. When you have very few people on the map, there's a ton of opportunity to, for flanking and movement. Uh, the other thing that I have is you have to have a turret. There are going to be some engagements where a turretless tank just can't participate very well. On this map in particular, in this game, I tell the Tier 1s, okay, I want you guys to go tracks and middle, see what they're doing. Uh, I tell everybody else to go by the 8-line. We're going to push the 8-line or the middle. I'm making all of this up on the fly. It does not matter, by the way. None of this remotely matters. As long as you have your main force going together, I'm going to provide flanking, so we're going to get angled shots on them. The Tier 1s are going to know that they're going to go cap at some point, and they're going to scout to make sure the enemy doesn't back cap us at some point. All of this is simple stuff. Uh, it's just coming right off the top of my head. We don't see the enemy right now, so I kind of ping to the Tier 1s, hey, go a little bit farther. I'm kind of using them as suicide scouts. This is not done enough because I don't really want to have one of our quote-unquote real tanks peek around a corner into an ISU. And we figure out that, you know what, they, they've they all gone hill. And uh, one of the, the 1390 says, hey, should I look up there? I'm like, no, leave them up there. Look where we are and look at the hill. They literally cannot shoot us. They have to swan dive off a 100-meter cliff to try and, you know, land on us. That's the only way they can damage us. So there's a Ferdy or a Tier 1 that is uh, getting crushed on the 8 line, and so I'm telling the 1390 to defend, because that's the only way we can lose at this point. We have the Tier 1s going towards cap, and the only way we can lose is to a fast cap. So I'm running back. That's my job as the most mobile tank. I have to do the defense. And we see their tanks come off of a hill. It becomes very clear that they don't want to try to fast cap us. So I have to get back and make sure that I can flank them again. That's my job. I made sure that cap was okay. Cap is okay. Now there's a 1390 streaking for our tier 1s. And I'm going to get side shots on this AMX 5100. 
So it's going pretty well for us. You can see that they're going to get a reset or two, but that means they had to spend shots on the tier ones and not on our real tanks. This means our real tanks can get damage in on them. And now the battle has become pretty fluid. Don't try to micromanage this part, just let it go. Uh, I know that the tank on cap is a tier one, so I'm just going to kill him quick before moving on with my life. So if you look at the minimap, you can see that uh, everything weird is just kind of happening. We have some people, the 1390 sitting on cap, the 110 and the FCM, or the ISX rather, are just kind of floating around in nowhere. Uh, don't, don't get too aggravated by that. That kind of miscommunication is just going to happen and it's not something you should really worry about. The big thing is you want to set people up in a position to succeed. I mean, that's your goal as a caller. Uh, it's their goal to determine what they need to do on the fly. And you can save a lot of situations like this when you, I love being a 1390 for this reason, because I can appear with an auto loader and just cycle out a tank or two. It's an incredibly powerful option that I like to have. I think callers should probably be in a, a Scout or an AMX 5100, something that's probably going to live a little bit longer and has a very big upside potential. The reason why they would live a little bit longer is the 1390 is just so mobile with great camel it's hard to kill too early and the AMX 5100 is going to be near the back of the fight to start. Here we go on steps. Now I have never called a battle on steps before, uh, but you know what? It's all easy. I'm going to send the tier ones on one side of the map and us on the other side of the map. I'm going to find the enemy and then we're going to figure it out from there. Uh, now, this map, I actually go away from my simple plan and I get punished for it. I'm actually going to find the enemy relatively early and I'm, they are not going to be on the side where the main force is going. I decided to send the main force on the west side because the Roomba, I don't want them meeting the Roomba in the open field. That could be disastrous. We have an FCM with us. I mean, the Roomba would just tear through him like nothing. So I'm going to scout and I'm going to discover that the enemy team is going to the east flank. There's the Roomba and oh god there is everybody else. Uh, now I kind of panic here and I could have taken a better escape route so there's a shot here that's going to be very important that I take which I should not have taken. Uh, later in the game that's going to be very costly. I was typing to the team and I was getting the team um, going the other direction. A better plan, I think, would have been to go up the middle road at the beginning or just say, you know what, we're going to the middle road. Since they're on the east side, we're just going to fast cap them. I didn't really want to go to for the fast cap strategy too much because they have a T69 and a type uh, that are a little bit more mobile than we are for the most part. And they have a Roomba sitting on base defense again. So. Uh, this one, I should have stuck to my guns and just said, okay, we didn't meet the main force on our flank. We're just going to move to fast cap, and then maybe I should have brought the other 1390, and we could have defended cap for quite a while while they cleaned up. So this is our fourth game, and we're 3-0 at this point, and the guys are feeling pretty good. They are getting a little bit more comfortable with what we're doing. They know that I give them a lot of freedom, I'm not going to micromanage anything. But this can be a little bit of a downside too. You can see on the minimap the 1390 is in K6 for God knows what reason, or he's over on the west side. That's just not where he should be. We know the main force is over here. They don't have a scout. He's just freelancing a little bit too much. And so I tell him, okay, you, you got to come back. We're going to try and do a big push at these guys. So. I signaled to the main force, the three heavies, that they should go in the canyon and we're going to do a valley push up to A8. The 1390 and I will stay on the little plateau above them and try to flank. Why this works is because we know the Roomba is back at base. We're going to have a 5 on 4 advantage. Super easy. I mean, there's no way this it goes badly, right? 
And a lot of people screw this up. If you have a simple numbers advantage, you have three tanks versus two in front of you, plow your tanks into their tanks, go. It is not hard, it is the easiest strategy in the world. So you can see the T-34 and T-32 aren't even to the fight yet, so I kept pinging the map trying to get my three heavies down there to push into those two mediums, and they just wouldn't do it. Um, the 1390 and I are getting some flank shots, but I'm taking damage, and the problem is I took that darn hit at the beginning, which is really going to limit my options. I ping the map again, guys, get in there. You should be able to kill them. It's now three on three, but there are a couple of mediums. I mean, at worst case scenario, there is a hit point advantage. And it's only at this point where I see what went wrong. The IS-6 climbed up here instead of just going around the corner and YOLOing at them. So he gets to the battle late, and now it's not quite the advantage that we had wanted it to be. Meanwhile, I am pretty much crippled, not loaded, and I'm just going to die here. Our 1390, uh, I did not keep track of him. He is doing a lot of freelancing. I don't know why he's in D5. But this is one of the things as a caller that you need to understand. So there are two main things that your random teammates are not going to do. One, they're not going to push into the enemy as a cohesive unit. They're not going to move into melee range. They, they just won't do it. I've tried to get this team. We're going to see uh, several uh, examples of this where I tell them, push into them. You're, you have a numbers advantage that's three on one, and they still won't push. Uh, another thing is they generally don't do well in scout tanks and freelancing roles. They generally aren't where they need to be. But with that knowledge in mind, you can fix it. Okay, so we're three on one on steps again. And so I send the T1s over to west. I decided I did not like west because east can move to the enemy cap zone so quickly, whereas west cannot. And I like fast capping. The enemy has an ISU, uh, which is not great uh, for them. And a T-34, which is again slow. So I'm imagining that we push into the valley again. Just like last time, that's going to be a problem because the teammates of mine are not going to do that. That's just not what they do. When you tell them to push, the minute they see a tank, they're just going to stop and fire trying and I type into chat we want to force a short range brawl I already know what I want to do in my head because the ISU and the T-34 are not going to be at the battle in time so we can clean up two tanks right away no problem and then deal with the rest of them but again the the random teammates will not push do not make them push don't try to micromanage the battle because it's not going to happen uh, and along those lines, if you have someone in, in a 1390 or another scout who is uh, not, who is freelancing a little too much, and again I type in to chat, we want to brawl the 5100, but if you have a 1390 that's kind of going off for a Wheezy 132, tell them to switch and do a heavy their movements will be much more predictable and you won't have to watch over them so much. So I'm telling the team to go. We're going to brawl the 5100 and I'm the only one moving. So little scout tank leading the way to the 5100. Uh, so this was just a clear example. Okay, I can't tell the team to do this anymore because they literally have no clue. And it's nothing against them. It's just that the average player does not think that way. And it, they play this like a pub game, and it's not a pub game, but they have no reason to think otherwise. Why would they think otherwise? All of the other battle callers are going to tell them just to fight it out when they see a tank, and that'll be that. I'm probably the only one who has told them, yeah, we want to brawl, we want to surround them. So I don't fault them at all. Uh, I just kind of make a mental note after this game that two in a row of games that were very, very winnable that I probably should not have done this anymore. So my next plan for something like this when this happens is just to grab one of the other more mobile tanks and flank with him and try to attack from two directions. Okay, we are on Ruinburg again, and the enemy team has just a pile of heavies. So we definitely don't want to meet them into the city. I tell the T1s 
to go into the city to spot while the rest of us are going to go around the E-line. We do not want to get into a mass brawl. We have a more mobile team, so we definitely want to try for a fast cap kind of idea. I think we're finally on TeamSpeak at this point, so you're going to see less of me typing in chat. Are we doing the same easy strategy again? Yeah, we really are. Uh, this time, I'm just going to stick to my guns. If we see the enemy team in city, we're just not going to engage them. We're just going to drive right past them and go to cap. There's a T1 there, which means, surprise, surprise, the main force is in city. Never saw that one coming. So I feel pretty good about just kind of rolling around here. Uh, there's the other T1. I mean, it's just a huge sign that says the IS-3s are in city. The IS-3s get spotted, what do you know, in the city. That was amazing. So I'm just going to calmly take out the T1s. There's no reason. There's nobody around to shoot me, so what's the big deal? And you can see the IS-3s moving into the city. They are firmly committed at this point. Uh, so I just tell the guys, we're just going fast cap, not a big deal, fight on the cap. Get on the cap and fight, not a big deal. So the T1, you can see he is moving at E3, he's moving towards their cap. That's a great decision by him because he can help out capping. It takes a shot from them to kill him, but that shot also doesn't kill the real tanks. So I tell, I think it, it's a 110. Uh, to come back with me and defend the cap and so now it's just the easiest cap race in the world except for the fact with our cap there's no one stopping it there's no one shooting at them while we have two tanks shooting at their team so this one's going to end up very predictably in our favor easy game it could have been even easier if i would have landed more than one shot out of five for the love of god and we are on Ruinberg again, so it's going to be the exact same thing. They have a slightly heavier lineup than we do with the T-28 prototype, and uh, we just have a Type 59, they have a Tiger II, and we have an FCM. So they have a tiny bit heavier lineup than we do. The T-28 prototype is going to be a huge liability, so I'm kind of expecting something of a camp because they can't really go on offense. I mean, the T-28, what's he going to do? crawl towards our cap but there's just not enough time so pretty standard thing the tier ones are going into the city they're going to spot they're going to cap when they can and the rest of us i just said yeah let's go out on the e-line i don't really care doesn't really matter so yeah it just does not matter where you send your main force for the most part you just need to be able to react and you need to be able to uh, fulfill your goals whether it's kill the enemy or cap them out. It just just doesn't matter. So again, when battle callers say, oh, the 110 go here, the IS-3 go there, the FCM go here, that guy go there. No, don't do that. Who cares? It's not going to make or break a battle. Just kind of say, okay, spread out around here somewhere. Awesome. So we see a T1. There's that sign again. <laughs> the team is on the other side. Uh, the team is on the other side or they could still be doing a hard camp. I'm not quite sure why they would have a T1 at that spot. What I mean by that is they had the 1390s scouting this area too, so why would you send two of them there? Okay, so their main force is in the city. Not a problem. So we're just going to move to the cap. Why not? Kill a T1, get in the cap, fight from the cap, win. Easiest plan ever. We're going to win whatever cap race because we have the more mobile tanks. It really is just that easy and that's why you can't bring something like a T-28. So we spot their IS-3s going towards our cap. I know that I'm going to need to be loaded and I'm going to need to do some cap defense. Just a simple cap race game. If you want to micromanage the battle, you want to use the simplest commands possible. Get on the cap. Get on the cap. Do not stop moving until you get on the cap. 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 Get on the cap. I mean, seriously, one word commands. Defend cap. Get on the cap. Run. Whatever. Don't make it overly complicated. So they sent a couple of their tanks ahead and a couple of their tanks behind, but that's not the greatest strategy because if you look at the layout on Ruinberg, our team can sit behind a building forcing the enemy 
to turn that corner to damage them and reset the cap. So one of them peeking around that corner is going to get annihilated almost instantly. Whereas they only have two tanks on cap, I can reset them. Yeah, I have the same problem where I have to go around that corner and get annihilated by them. But there's only two tanks for us to reset and there's three tanks for them to reset. I'm kind of annoyed that the medium on our side didn't just get in the cap as well, but it worked out as the other team didn't push into him as hard as he could have. So we're on Ensk and we're facing down a hodgepodge team, and so I tell the tier 1s to go into the field, push to cap, the rest of us are going to meet in the city, and the Type 59 and I are going to flank, and so we're going to engage from multiple sides. Again, easiest plan in the world. If the full-on brawl fails, then hopefully the Tier 1s can come through. If we fail as a brawl, then hopefully the Tier 1s can cap. We're giving ourselves all the opportunities to win. We're not just letting the Tier 1s sit out there. We're giving, saying that, hey, you guys have a specific role, and it's not just scouting. We need you to get in the cap. We need you to put cap pressure on them. Because once the enemy team sees that cap pressure, it peels away tanks from the main force. So right now I'm doing some scouting, uh, looking for their deployment. I don't expect to see anything, but, you know, you can always hope. Generally, the enemy team pushes down one line on this map. Uh, we do spot them in the middle, and so the strategy is pretty clear. I'm going to have one tank along with myself, the type who for some reason... Oh, he was in the field, that's why he was so slow to get over here. So the type is going to come over with me, and we are actually going to flank these two and just start a fight. The tier ones, I told them to move towards cap, and it's already going. Now you can see in this battle how sloppy it's going to get. But you can scream focus fire all you want, you can scream target this guy all you want, and it's just not going to happen for you with random players. Even a lot of land-holding clans don't have the best coordination, so don't expect miracles, don't scream at them, just do what you can. And it's nothing against these guys, these guys did great, loved playing with them. It's just that you have to be realistic sometimes when you're trying to figure out what you can have people do and what you can't. Don't give uh, unrealistic expectations for people. So the battle looks sloppy and I'm reloading, but the fact of the matter is we have multiple angles on them. Uh, we're winning in HP for the most part. There's a tiny problem where we have a tier one around our base who kind of snuck through, I think, on the rails but that's kind of the least of our problems. Um, I'm not sure why I was kind of drifting off in this area, but I fixed that problem and I'm going back to help finish off the T-32 and then just kind of clean up the mess. Uh-oh, we're on Ruinberg again. I skipped forward a little bit as we all know the plan by now. T-1s go to one side, main force to the other side, I find the enemy. Not a problem. So I see the 1390 and a T1 going this way, so I assume that the main force is in the city. Pretty easy assumption to make. They're missing a T1, uh, and there a medium pops up in the city. Not a problem. What's the order? Yeah, I just said we're going to go cap. Not a big thing. So we're going to keep lights on them for a little bit. As long as they're giving us side shots, we're going to take those side shots. The T69 got tracked. Uh, repeatedly died in the open, and the T-32 and IS-6 apparently want to eat some shells as well. We're just going to oblige them in that case. I'm going to keep eyes on them just to make sure, are they turning around, are they going back to cap? That's why I'm moving forward here. I want to see further what they do, but the team, the green team, for the most part, I told them to go cap. We're just going to cap race it. We're not going to go try to chase them down. Uh, we don't know where the low is. And we know that by heading to cap, we're just going to have a pretty solid advantage. The AMX 1390 pops up by our remaining light. He can't really escape. He's in a corner. But I'm just going preparing to defend while the rest of them cap. I don't see him yet, which kind of makes me think they've gone back to base. And so I'm going to reload in just a moment. I'm a little too aggressive with reloads. The AMX 1390 actually can't chase me down before I reload, so... No problems there. Uh, they're, they are, they're lit up back at base. They are defending 
but they're without their AMX and it's a four on three back at base and I'll be able to get back there pretty quickly. Uh, I think the AMX will be loaded at the same time. So, so I mean, this is all you can do. You can get your team into a position where they have an advantage. They have a four on three and I'm actually moving to flank at this point. I might be getting a little too smart for my own good as a wild AMX appears and this is a problem because I am at a strict hit point disadvantage. So I finally get loaded and I put a couple shots into him but I am going to die. He did not reload and I did so. But the advantage in the fight down south is taking its toll they were able to eliminate a tank and now it's four on two and this is where the pub phenomenon comes up again there's four of them and a T-32 so I'm trying to coax them to just surround the T-32 get in there push past him it's four on one at this point the low absolutely cannot help and after this point the game is pretty much over they're gonna kill the T-32 not in the cleanest way but it's going to happen and then we can just cap because the AMX 1390 is the only one who's going to be able to cap. The FCM is making strides back to defend but I just tell him, yo, we're just gonna sit on the cap and the low cannot fire fast enough to kill everybody in time. And again, very very simple stuff. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't try to do more than you have to. Uh, just get the win secured and that's all it's going to be. Even with the low firing back, it doesn't matter. It still accumulates at a rate of 2 to 1 over the AMX and now that the low is dead, just an easy win. Hey, it's a new map! Ruinburg gets so, so boring all of the time, especially when people love to camp in that southwest corner. So very boring. Uh, anyway, this is Abby and the plan is going to be sending a T1 into the middle, sending a T1 onto the 8 line, and the rest of us are going to push 1-2. Now I deviate a little bit and I say the heavies are going to be on the upper level of the 1-2 and the mediums, the Type 59 and myself, are going to flank along the bottom. Now this obviously could be subject to change, but I'm trying to be clear before we get in the action, before anything goes right or wrong, want to make sure everyone's kind of with the same game plan. I skipped a little bit of travel time, but we're moving on the 1-2 line. An enemy pops up in the middle, uh, but we don't know where the rest of the team is at. So when we encounter them, the plan is just to say, yeah, yo, let's go get them. That's all. That's all the plan is. Uh, since we didn't encounter them at the usual pub meeting location of D2, where I thought we were going to, that flanking plan that I had before is just kind of thrown right out the window. So uh, the FCM is getting a little far up there. I tell him, you know, pull back. We need everybody here. You don't want to peek out, especially because, you know, you're an FCM. So I want to go scout to the bottom. I still want this flanking plan in mind, and they are spotted up on that ridge. I'm not sure if that's a normal thing, but it seems like a weird place to hide. So the Type 59 and I are going to go on the bottom, the heavier tanks are going to go on top. Now I am assuming that the IS-3 is not alone and we spot the T-32, so yes, definitely not alone. But I wasn't quite sure at the moment if they had a force on top and force on bottom. So the Type and I are moving back. We do signal to the other guys that, hey, don't do anything until we cap. Uh, we spot the T1s, there's an AMX in the middle. This is roughly problematic, roughly not. All right, so again, I'm kind of leading when I shouldn't be leading, but whatever. There's a T32 and the AMX 5100 in front of me. The AMX 1390 is going to make an appearance right there. And that means they have a three on two situation up top. They need to push it. It's a simple numbers advantage go and get them and they're just kind of stuck there it's that situation again now they have a three on one situation and I'm telling him guys just go just surround him I mean look at he's half dead they eventually warm up to the idea and go and surround him and kill him the AMX 5100 is clipping that's why they did not kill the type 59 before he was able to kill the 1390 so now we're left with a situation of three 
pretty full tanks against an AMX that's not loaded and a T-32 that's preoccupied with the T-1 sitting on cap. See? Tier 1's always good distractions. And last up, we're on Ruinberg yet again. Oh my god, this map over and over again. So, all of these games are basically pushing one idea. This is a basic framework that you can use in your own games. It's not the best strategy ever, it's not the worst. It's just the basics of what people are trying to do. Use the tier ones for scouting. Use them to cap and back cap opponents. Try to push your force into their force uh, with some kind of flanking and scout to get that uh, map control and information that you need. All it is is a basic framework. Some ways that you can branch out from it are running several 1390s, so you can have three heavies and two basic flankers. You can overwhelm their scout when you find him in the wild. Uh, you can run just straight up IS-3s or heavies because you don't need scouting, because your tier 1s will be able to cover enough of the map. Those are more advanced strategies that you can do. Personally, I think it's a little bit easier to start with a dedicated scout that can find the enemy, because when you know where they are right away, everything is just so much easier. When you run a 5 heavy setup, it can be guessing in the dark sometimes. Now, if you have a ton of experience, yep, that can be great, and you can force that brawl right where you want it to happen, but you got to make your decisions really fast, otherwise the other team is just going to use their mobility over you to your regret. You could also use an all-light tank setup to swarm the enemy and never give them that brawl. The championship finals were just one on Sand River, where one side had a bunch of 1390s that would never directly engage, and they just floated all over the map. But those are advanced strategies, and it takes a lot of teamwork to run those. This is just something that's going to be very basic. So we found their main force, and they are YOLOing at us. This AMX 5100 is discovering what I already know. The people don't like following you when you YOLO like that. So he's going to die pretty quickly, and this is just a fun little brawl to end the game. Uh, they get wiped out pretty quickly. But we play them again, and our last loss comes to them on this map and even on these sides. So, overall, I hope that you try out team battles, uh, whether it's as a grunt or it's as a caller. I think they're a lot of fun. I think they offer a lot of opportunity for creativity. It's very balanced on both sides, and Wargaming often runs promotions from them, credit promotions. Uh, this weekend there was, if you won 10 games, you got a bunch of premium consumables. That's great stuff, too. All the things contained in this video, I wrote up a piece kind of summarizing everything. It's on rbs.com. Check it out. Link's in the comments. Hope you enjoyed. Happy hunting.